going to take a right-footed penalty as he seeks his first Celtic goal. Will he hear the roar? He side-foots it home into the bottom right and sends Craig Gordon the wrong way. Arnie Engels is off the mark for Celtic on his first start and he's broken the deadlock and what was threatening to be a potentially frustrating and stuffy afternoon for the champions. It's Celtic one, Heart of Midlothian nil. So McCowan takes a touch, shoots, and he scores! Gordon got a touch, but Luke McCowan opens his Celtic account after his dream move here on deadline day. The former Dundee captain hits it from the edge of the area. Gordon got a touch. It came bouncing off the post into the net. The points are staying here. What a moment for Luke McCowan. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Celtic Forever podcast. We're going to go through the Hearts game. We're going to go through the Bratislava game on Wednesday night. Quite a lot to, to go through, actually. A wee bit to go through. So let's get started. We'll start with uh, saying hello to John first. How are you, John? All right, Sander. How's you? Are you okay, John? Okay. We're a bit late doing the the post match of the Hearts game. We'll just quickly run through it, John. Obviously, we'll just quickly run through that. But a wee bit of housekeeping before we, we move on. Uh, hit that notification bell so that you can get the competition notification if you want to join the competitions. And speaking of the competition, John, we're going to change it. We're going to make it to YouTube exclusively, just YouTube followers and subscribers only, John. So that's what it's going to be. From now on, we're not going to share it over on Facebook. We'll put the link on Facebook, and if they want to come over to YouTube and uh, join in the fun, then that's not a problem. Um, so we're going to change the format there, John. So the competition for this week is, what will the correct score be? Celtic against Hearts. Sorry, Celtic against Falkirk on Sunday. So we're looking for the correct score. One guess each. Any of the comments, as usual, folks. And that's to win the Lisbon Lions metal plaque, John. So we change the format there. Aye, I will. I think it's right because you kind of keep an eye on uh, two platforms at the one time. It's too much, you know. But uh, aye, anybody that's listening on uh, Facebook, you need to go over to YouTube and get your uh, entries into the competition that way. Aye, good, good plan. Makes makes a uh, bit of sense, that to be honest with you. Yeah, it does, John. And also means we'll hopefully get some more viewers and subscribers as well into the bargain. So. Uh... It's a, it's a wee benefit if it works, so we'll see what happens with that. So good luck everybody with the competition anyway. So that um that'll end just before kick off on Sunday. So get your entries in before Sunday, folks. Uh, hit the the subscribe button, please. That'd be helpful, and hit the like button as well. Right, John. Let's get into this Hearts game. We're just going to quickly go through this. Uh, performance wise, John wasn't it great, was it? Let's be honest, wasn't it great? A bit sloppy after the international break. That's why I'm putting it down to you anyway. Um, players not really performing, but we did say that on the preview, didn't we, John, that they were going to possibly come back a wee bit sluggish, and that's the way it worked out. Aye, it was a wee bit sluggish. Uh, well, it was still Celtic controlled the entire game, just about. I know Hearts had a wee spell, but aye, it was a wee bit sluggish, but that sharpness comes when the team starts, you know, playing together. I think I thought they played all right. It's just a case of trying to break down two brick balls, Sander, two banks of five. Well, it was, it was sort of a a 5-3-2 Hearts were playing, I would say, aye. Yeah, John, I thought Hearts actually did quite well, if I'm going to be honest. They, they came and did what they, they were going to do, and um, they stuck to their game plan. So, you know, they were frustrating us, to, to be fair to them. They were frustrating us uh, up until that first goal went in the second half, nothing each at half-time, obviously. But let's touch on the, the penalties then, John. The Hearts won first, the, the one that came off scales. I mean, it's never a penalty, is it? I mean, I was screaming it was never a penalty. Uh, but the referee in his wisdom pointed straight to the spot, John, and then thank goodness it went to VAR because it was overturned, and rightly so. It was very reminiscent of the one that, uh, what was his name, Yang? Was it Yang? Yang, yeah, yeah John, yeah. Aye, at Tyne Castle uh, last season. A very, very similar penalty. When Hearts got that penalty, we were enraged about that. I, I don't think it was a penalty against Hearts. Um, and that that one with skills, I don't think that was a penalty either, to be honest with you. But one referee deemed it a penalty, and uh, well, both referees deemed them penalties. The one at Tynecastle and the one at Celtic Park deemed it penalties. But uh, thankfully, VAR had the common sense to overturn that because skills knew nothing about that. I don't understand how. I mean, he's the two players are 
touch tight, isn't they, as well, John? And Skills is facing away from the ball. So it's just mind boggling how the referee actually gave that as a, as a penalty, to be honest with you, John. Um, you could always go and then VAR could have had a look at it. But no, no, he pointed to the spot and thank God for Alan Muir and the VAR who uh, called him over to the screen, John, and it was, it was uh, overturned. So we can only be thankful for that. Apart from that, in the first half, John, huffing and puffing went a few wee chances here and there. Uh, you were, Nobody thought, well, we certainly didn't think that the, the big new boy would have came on from the start, John. Um, I thought Engels would have been on the bench, but he started, John. So Brendan's obviously, you know, he's shown everybody where Engels is going to be throughout the season. He's going to be starting games, John, as, as far as Brendan's concerned. Well, you spend big money and players are having a million quid. You're going to have to start them sometimes, Ander. But uh, I feel bad for Paolo Bernardo, to be honest with you. Um, he was outstanding against Rangers and I feel bad for the boy that he's been dropped already. But like I says, if you're spending a hundred million pounds on uh, players, you want them to start. You want your money's worth. Of course you do, John. You want your money's worth. And he, did, he actually did okay. There was a chance in the first half he blazed, blazed it by the post, didn't he? It was sort of a half volley. Unlucky as well. But, you know, he could have done better also. But he's just trying to find his feet. You've got to remember the boy angles. So uh, that was a good effort. He had another couple of nice wee touches, John. Uh, he, did, he looks okay, he looks, he looks quite physical, but I also thought he tired near the end of the game as well, so he's obviously got to build up his fitness also, but John, yeah, he looks okay, uh, £11 million pound boy, and that price tag's just going to stick with him, isn't it? I, I think it is, I, even the Hearts guy, Halkett, he was uh, shouting him at the penalty, did you see that? No, no, go on John, I didn't see that. And he was taking the penalty, so if you watch the Celtic... On YouTube, Celtic's channel on YouTube, the official Celtic channel. Mm -hmm. No, they always give you the kind of, uh, the, what do you call it? Just basically the, the view that nobody else has seen, basically a camera behind the goal watching them. The unique angle, sent it the unique angle. That's a unique angle. I couldn't remember what it was called there. Yeah. Uh, the unique angle one on Celtic. Watch it and you'll hear, uh, what's his name, Shanklin shouting them. I can't remember what he was shouting them. He shouts something twice at him. My memory's terrible, honestly. I only watched it the day enough. Um, but he was shouting, shouting at Engels a couple of times. Uh, you're going to bottle or whatever it was. He shouted that twice at him, something like that, something along those lines. And then Halkett shouted to him, 10 million quid, I right before he hit it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to stick with the boy. Uh, and hopefully it doesn't affect him. I don't think it will. I know he's only a young boy. Where is it? Where age is Engels? 20, I think he is, John. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's going to, that's going to hit that price tag's going to stick. So hopefully, um, you'll shut a few people up then if that's the case. To be honest with you, John. So yeah, yeah, sluggish the first half, wasn't it, John? It's just one of the d days when you come back from international duty, two week layoff, John. We come back very sluggish, and uh, and as I said earlier, John, to be fair to Hearts, you know they stuck to their game plan. So into the second half, then, John, we go and we, we finally get the penalty, John. This. I mean, to me, this I put, I put the highlights. Anybody, by the way, that wants to see the highlights, my highlights real. It's no BBCs. <laughs> We're going to get to them later on again. It seems all we it seems all we do is talk about the BBC. Anyway, it's on uh, Facebook. If you want to have a look at it, uh, I'll put the link in the description. The, the highlights for Facebook. Uh, this is a stonewaller. You know, John. It's the ball. His hands out. The ball changes direction. Goes out for a corner. It's a stone wall penalty, John. And I'm going to go and know about the BBC just now because I listened to it in the radio. I didn't get to see the game this weekend, but I listened to it in the radio. And honestly, you know, they're actually saying it's not a penalty, you know, on the radio. You know, I think it was um, Big John Hughes saying uh, it's very harsh, John. It's, it's one of the most blatant and obvious penalties I've ever seen in my life. Oh, it's a stone wall. Plain and simple. He's made his body bigger. He's stoked the bogging into the box. Uh, look, if ever there was a stonewall penalty, that was it. Anybody that wants to argue with that has got their blue tinted glasses on. I don't care who it is. Because that, for me, is a stonewall penalty as you'll ever see. And any team's eyes, if I've seen that, even if it was Rangers, I would say, ah, it's a penalty. He's put his hand out to uh, stoke the bog in it. The box, it's a stonewall penalty. You can't argue with it. And it's karma for that boy. What was his name? Penrice or something like that, wasn't it? Uh, Penrice sticks his arm out. 
stops the ball and it's karma for what he did to uh, Engels earlier on trying to snap his leg. Yeah, John, as I say, I didn't get to see much of the game. I can only really comment on the the main points in the game. So I didn't see any of the re incidents in the game. Is there any what you want to bring up, John, uh, what happened there? They just went in for a tackle right in, in uh, Engel's foot. But again, t- similar type tackle you normally see going in, bad tackles you see going in in Celtic players. The ball's away, he comes flying in and takes his foot out, his standing foot away in the ground. That was nearly £11 million up in there. Yeah, dirty tactics, isn't it, John? That's, you know, we need to watch out for that. Obviously, these teams are going to try. It's the only way they're going to beat us. Let's be, let's be frank about it. You know, if, if they put a few of our players on the sidelines for a couple of months, you know, they've done their job, haven't they? So, yeah, I'm glad they walked away for that then, to be honest with you. And as you say, it's karma as well for England. And a nice finish, John. Nice, beautifully calm and composed penalty. Uh, no problem for England there at all. No. Especially when you had day two Muppets shouting him before he's taken it. Pressure and all that shank was shouting, ah, he can handle the pressure, whatever it was, and then the other Muppet, 10 million quid, aye, right? Uh, do you feel what's saying to him? Football player, aye, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Half get who's he? Yeah, that's it. No, no, John. It's, um, he, d- he dispatched it beautifully and uh, very composed. So. One nothing Celtic anyway, John. That's us. One nothing up. Uh, things are looking good again. So we didn't play great, but we're we're still ahead, John. And then it's tippy tappy into it again. The same as the first half. I think we were just in international mode, John. I think the players looked very lacklustre. I know. I always hate that coming back off international game. That's oh, it's a soul destroyer. It's an absolute soul destroyer. And we did say that the other day. It's got, it could be one of the games. It's a international hangover type game. It turned out to be that way. But, uh, look, we're still on top. There's no difference to the, the points in the league. We won the game. That's all that matters. So, aye, job done, I would say. That's it. Yeah, that's it, John. Um, and we get the second goal. Uh, and it's young Luke McCowan. That's a decent goal. It's outside the box, John. About 19 yards out. Good strike. Keeper gets a hand to it. Gordon unlucky, I suppose. But, too much power in it, and off the post, two nothing. Celtic fans are happy, and that's all we're looking for, John. Two nothing, easy street. Aye, nice to be finished from uh, Luke McGowan. That one enjoyed that. Celtic fans enjoyed that. Luke McGow- McGow- McGowan really enjoyed that one. That was uh, good to see a Celtic fan celebrating uh, with the team that he loves, you know, in front of the fans that he loves. Aye, nice to be finished for the boy for about nineteen yards out. Really happy with that. Uh, big Craig Gordon. Uh, I thought Craig Gordon was pretty poor there to be honest with you Sander uh, yeah but I thought there was just too much power in it but yeah John it's a, it's a goal either way whether it was too much power whether it was a poor shot whether it was a poor save I don't know John it's 2 nothing. doesn't matter either way uh, easy straight then we get a third goal John big Adam he does offside marginally offside but as we keep we keep seeing offsides offside into it but a decent cross into the box, John, and a decent finish for Big Adam. Either. It's good to see him getting uh, on the score sheet, although it was disallowed. Aye, it was a nice finish. It's a kind of typical Adam Eder type goal, isn't it? Poacher goal. He's right in there. Nice finish. Sadly chopped off. Uh, I think it was Palmer that was offside on the left. Uh, wasn't much in it, to be honest with you. Half a yard. But aye, nice finish for Big Adam. Just a pity. Uh, we couldn't get him on the a score sheet, you know, get him up and running for the season, but it's not to be 2-0, two, two we'll take that all day. Yep, yep, and just very quickly as well, the injuries that we said in the preview, everyone them played, didn't they? So, Johnston played, Taylor played, who else did we say, even the Hearts player played, <laughs> um, uh, Vargas, he played as well, didn't he? So, the, everybody was fit to play, so there was no injury doubts at all, so everybody started the game. Um all right, John, 2 nothing as you say. That's full-time. Uh, put us as eight points for the Rangers at that point. Obviously, they got their, their very lucky snooze fest of a 1-0 win against Dundee United. And they celebrated yet again, John, like they've just won the league. So, we're going to get this every time they get a win this season, obviously. But, John, still five points clear the Rangers. Aberdeen, they got their win as well. So, they, so they're um, keeping close tabs with Celtic at the top of the league. Um, so the uh, Aberdeen are closest rivals there, John. Aye, Aberdeen are doing really well. Um, they're not going to be a pushover. Let's put it that way. Whenever we come up against them, it's going to be a good game. But uh, they're on fire just now, Aberdeen. I wouldn't say I was concerned about that. 
we're, we're going to finish second in the league, I'd rather it was to Aberdeen than Rangers. <laughs> that way. I know that we're going to finish second, but if, if we were to finish second, I would rather it was to Aberdeen. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I remember back in the 90s wanting Aberdeen to do well, so to pit Rangers, that never ever happened, did it? So anyway, the, do I go back to the dark days? Uh, let's move on, John. Okay, individual players, 1 to 11 ratings. This is going to be interesting because I think we were flat, John. What's your, what's your scores for the players? Uh, would you congratulate Aberdeen if they won the league? Of course I would, John. Yeah, after all the years, uh, you know, winning the league, you know, decades and decades. Of course I would, John. It would be a major achievement, especially, you Sorry. know, especially, I'm sorry, especially, John, the way Celtic are just you know, flying high, playing brilliant stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'd congratulate them, but I kind of see it happen. No, oh, I'm right up there. Really. I would congratulate them as well if they won the league. Any team in Scotland that won the league, I would congratulate them, apart from Rangers um, and Hearts and Hibs. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you're saying, John. No, no, it's, uh, it's very hypothetical, obviously, but I know what you're saying. It's a good question, actually. Um, yeah, of course I would. Uh, well, right, John, 1 to 10, this is, this is interesting. I didn't get to see... Uh, much of the game, only seen bits and bobs of it, highlights, etc. So my scores won't be very accurate, John. But what are you thinking? Oh, I watched the whole game. I know only Engels got Celtics man of the match. I, di- I disagree with that. Uh, right off the bat, I disagree with that. Casper uh, Smeichel, eight and a half. Mm-hmm. Liam Scales, eight and a half. Carter Vickers, eight and a half. Alistair Johnson, seven. Although he was bombing up and doing that wing, but he was giving the ball away quite a lot to be honest with you uh, Greg Taylor 7.5 Carl McGregor 7 Engels 7 Hatate probably 7 as well up front Kyogo 5 He was. I thought he was quite poor to be honest with you very poor in fact 5.5 all game uh, Maeda 5.5 as well he was poor and Nicholas Kuhn 7.5 yeah, John, it sounds as though the forward players won the firing apart from Nicholas. And, John, that's basically... I'll, for what I saw, I'll give you my scores, right? Not that it goes for anything. But the two centre-halves, I'm going to give two of them eight. The two... The left-back and the right-back, I'll give both of them seven. Callum, I'm giving a seven. Uh, Engels, I'll give a seven and a half because he's goal. I'll give... Uh, who was the other one that was in midfield, John? Hattati. Hattati, John, yeah, he never done much, did he? Seven. Uh, Kyogo, six. Maeda 6 and my man in the match was uh, Nicholas Kuhn although I didn't see the second half so it's hard for me to give a man in the match but uh, Kuhn yeah I'm going to give him an 8 aye that's fair enough aye um, it was just it was a bit just a very steel performance overall I thought but I'm giving my man in the match to Liam Skills again yeah he's brilliant isn't he John he's, he doesn't put a foot wrong he's, he's just a class class defender John and that I totally agree with you, because what I saw in the first half, his scales, you know, put a foot wrong as well. You know, the penalty thing, you know, John, that's, there's no fault there in scales' behalf. You know, he's just jumped for the ball, and it's, and it's just the way that the ball comes down, hits off the back of his hand. Yeah, John, yeah, man of the match, yeah, well said. Um, that's a few scales got this season, isn't it, already? Oh, it's unbelievable. I heard a guy on Radio Clyde, and I've started listening to Radio Clyde again, by the way, the phone-ins. Mm-hmm. And I heard a guy the night on Radio Clyde saying, I'm starting to warm to Liam Scales. Are you kidding me on? You're starting to warm to him. He was player of the season last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's laughable, that isn't it? Starting to warm him. You know, he's... <laughs> you've been thinking he's lucky stars. No starting to warm him, to be honest with you, John. Um, OK, let's have a wee look at the game on Wednesday night, John. Back in the Champions League, aren't we? Slovan Bratislava, Slovakian team, John. Just off of a 3-2 win at the weekend as well. They won the game before that also. So they're, they're on form in their own country, John. They're doing quite well. But uh, it's a home, John. 60,000 screaming Celtic fans. Uh, it's going to be some atmosphere as well. We just want to get off to a flying start with three points here. Ah, well, that's it. I don't know anything about them. It doesn't mean they're a bad team because I don't know anything about them. I've heard of them, of course. I've heard of uh, Slava and Bra- Bratislav uh, for years. I've known the name, but I've known nothing about them. I know one that can uh, let Celtic know about that. It's probably we Libo. Yeah, I'm sure he'll have an insight into them. Yeah, yeah, Libo, he'll know plenty about them, won't he? So, the last four games, John, they're unbeaten. You know, they've played, every every team they've played, they've, they've beat. I think there was a draw. 
in a qualifier against Mitchelland and then they obviously beat Mitchelland. Um, yeah, John, they're, they're, um, they're just on forum, John, and they're, they're winning games. So they're definitely a team that we need to keep a close eye on. But I think if we're on forum the way we were before the international break, I don't see there being a problem. What about you, John? Uh, I, for, for like you say, before the international break, uh, we were only in that form on uh, Saturday. Far from that form, so uh, Celtic's got to step it up a level or two levels because uh, if they perform like that against uh, Bratislava, they'll get exposed. You know, I mean? Bratislava are in the Champions League for a reason. They're a good team. I'm no, I'm no doubt in that for a second. It's going to be a tough game. And Celtic really need to get their act together for Wednesday, and I'm sure they will, Xander. I'm, I'm very sure they will. They'll be training hard ahead of that game. Get a full squad to pick from. So I am I'm fairly confident. I'm not saying I'm overly confident we're going to win it in, but I'm fairly confident we'll pick up the performance. Yeah, and it's one I'm not going to be missing this time, John. I've missed the, the Hearts game, but I'm not missing this. I'm definitely going to be watching this one, John. So the odds, let's have a real look at the odds. Celtic 4 to 11, so I'll make that 1 to 3. So Celtic hot favourites again, obviously because we're at Celtic Park. The draw is uh, between 4 and 5 to 1. 4 and 5 to 1 for the draw. Uh, and uh, Slovan Bratislava won its place at 17 to 2, John. So I'll make that about roughly between 8 and 9 to 1. So they're still making this hot favourites, the bookmakers. Aye. That's, that's a favourable uh, bet, that, isn't it? It's uh, good money on that. Yeah. Uh, Need to know anything about them, Xander, for a start. I take it most people, most Celtic fans won't know anything about them. Uh, I don't know, eight ninety one for a for a Champions League team. That's uh, good for Celtic, yeah, Sander. Yeah, yeah, John. It's, it's you know when do you ever see us like that in a Champions League game? Let's be honest, to be, to be perfectly frank with you, John. Uh, Adam Ida uh, is five to one to score the first goal. Nicholas is six to one. Kyogo's forty one. If you like your outside bets for the first goal scorer, you've got Rio at ten to one. Bernardo 11 to 1, Engels 13 to 1. You've got, uh, who else have we got, John, for, for an outside bet for the first goal? Callum 18 to 1. We've also got Alastair 30, 33 to 1, sorry, same as Greg Taylor. And then you've got Big Cameron, Carter Vickers, and Scales both at 40 to 1. So that's your correct score. Betting John, anything stick out for you there? Uh, sorry, your first goal, first goal scorer, sorry. But first goal for me, I fancy a wee uh, flutter on Dyson Maeda. Yeah, Dyson, I think, I think, uh, I'm going to go with McCallum, actually, for the first goal score. I think he's going to be back on for him, had his wee, you know, he didn't play any international football, did he? But he's, uh, he's 18 to 1 to score the first goal, John, but I think he's going to come back, bang in the first goal. Um, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be another one of these sort of uh, nervy nights, John. It always is in the Champions League, isn't it? By the way, incidentally, Dyson Mida is 71 to score the first goal, John, so that's your odds on Dyson. Uh, but it's going to be an early night, it always is in the Champions League. Aye, Bratislava, they're not going to be any mugs, they're going to be a half decent team. I've seen teams uh, that people know a little about coming to Celtic Park and giving Celtic a hard time. Um, but this is the Champions League, so they're not mugs, they're there for a reason, they're their own merit, so they're going to be a decent team. Let's not kid ourselves. It's going to be a, a tough night, I think. Yeah, tough. Very tough. Um, they're in the Champions League for a reason, John. That's what you've got to remember, isn't it? So let's have a wee look at the correct score bet and uh, we'll get a wee prediction off you in a minute, John. 2-0 uh, to Celtic is 13-2. to two. We've got 1-0 to Celtic, 15-2. 2-1 to Celtic, 8-1. to one. And a 3-0 win for Celtic is 9-1. to 3-1 to Celtic is 11-1. to one. Um, and if you're going to go against Celtic, which nobody is, obviously, you're looking at... Uh, let's have a look at the, the, the odds on the dr- one each draw is 9 to 1. 9 to 1 for a one each draw. A 1 0 win for Bratislava is 25 to 1, John. So definitely not giving Bratislava much of a chance here, are they? No, I'm just sure the bookies know a lot more about Bratislava than we do, but um, no, they're not giving, they're giving them much of a chance, which I think is. Uh, Quite, quite a bad move when it comes to the Champions League because it's uh, it's hard to pit teams up, you know, pit them together. You've got a team from Scotland and a team from Slovakia. 
it's hard to judge that if you ask me because they've no played each other. Yeah. So, uh, aye, the bookies just seem to be going on the assumption that because it's at Celtic Park, then it's a Celtic win against a, you know, they're no, oh, let's be honest, Bratis Lava, they're no a big name in the Champions League. But I've known about them all my life, uh, you know, through uh, watching the game and playing FIFA and all that, so everybody's heard of them. Yeah, they got into the, the, the Champions League proper through the qualifiers, John Beaton, Mitchelland over two legs. So, yeah, they're decent if they're beating teams like Mitchelland. We struggled against Mitchelland a few years ago, if you remember. So, yeah, John. Uh, we outside bet, Kyogo, hat track 28 to 1. Uh, I don't think anybody will go anywhere near that, will they? So, um, there's not many players score hat, tr- score hat trick, sorry, in the Champions League. Uh, John, I did a wee score prediction after you then, John. I know it's tough because you, you don't know much about the Slovakians. What were you thinking? A wee, a wee score prediction from you? I think there's going to be goals in it for some reason. I'm going to say 3 2 Celtic. 3 2 Celtic, yeah. Um, that, that'd be interesting if that was the case, wouldn't it, John? It's uh, a high scoring game like that. 3 uh, 2 to Celtic, yeah. I'm, I don't know, John. I don't know. I'm going to say, by the way, incidentally, the, the odds on a 3 2 win for Celtic is 25 to 1, if, um, if anybody's interested in that. 3 2, John, I'm going to go clean sheet again. I don't know much about them either. To be honest with you, um, but it's a Champions League team. Uh, they're always good for a goal, aren't they? But I'm going to say two nothing to Celtic, John. I'm going to, I'm going to play it safe. <laughs> I'm going to play it safe. Two 0 to Celtic on a Champions League night would be an ideal start for us. I, I suppose it would be an ideal start, perfect start, in fact. But uh, I don't know. I just think Champions League nights, there's always goals for these away teams. There always seems to be goals in it. But they fancy Celtic for the win, so I'm going to stick with my guns and I think there's going to be goals in it. Um, Celtic finding their feet in the Champions League, basically. So I, I think it's going to, there's going to be goals in this one. 3-2 Celtic. Yeah, 3-2 Celtic. Yeah, OK. Any win, John? Any win? Let's let's get this win over the line. Get us off to a brilliant start. You know, it would be absolutely fantastic. Aye, I think it's going to be a good game. Aye, I think it's going to be a good game. Aye, I think it's going to be a good game. Aye, I think it's going to be a good game. Aye, I think it's going to be a good game. Aye, I think it's going to be a good game. Aye, I think it's going to be a good game. Aye, I think it's going to be a good game. Aye, it's all action, John. It's all happening just now at Celtic, isn't it? It really is. Um, John, I don't know if you want to run through very quickly a couple of comments. Hi, Bill. I'm not on my computer tonight. I'm on the, the phone tonight, which is uh, it's a bit strange for me. I like to use my computer, the proper microphone and that, you know, but I, I don't know what that's got to do with reading comments, by the way, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's, uh, people have got to know these things, John. It's, uh, people are interested in all this sort of stuff. And by the way, just incidentally, we're, we're using a, a different app tonight just to try it out because we don't think the, the, the sound quality on StreamYard is great. So we're trying this, John, just to, just to try it out, aren't we? So uh, we're just messing about with the podcast, the quality of it just now to we get it right, folks, in case you're wondering what's happening. Aye. And I kind of use my mic on this. Yeah. For some reason, of course, I can't use the computer with this app, then that's why I'm on the phone. Anyway, Roseanne was first up. She says, Used to make me laugh every time the pundits talk rubbish about Sevco. Uh, she switches the telly off, basically. Uh, she that? watches adverts for funeral expenses instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw that one. John, it's funny. I'm glad you brought that one up, actually, because I wanted to mention the BBC yet again. Stephen Cragan on these highlight show. I've no saw it. I've just Celtic fans. I mean, the Celtic, Celtic fans are complaining about the BBC. You know, John, how long have we been complaining about the BBC? And I think a lot of the Celtic fans have as well, to be honest with you. But you're hearing about it more now, but they're just absolutely dreadful, aren't they? Oh, they're pathetic. Uh, I don't watch it, like I say. I haven't watched them for years for that very reason. And for the reason that I wouldn't appear on my telly licence either. But uh, aye, they're pathetic, the BBC. And their bias is unbelievable. They're supposed to be a neutral... And they're no hiding. It's just Rangers Radio, basically. Um, so if any Celtic fans want to listen to Rangers Radio from a professional player's point of view, then get over to the BBC and uh, give them their, their listening time. Because uh, me personally, I would advise everybody to stay well away from it. Well away. Yeah, well said, John. Um, sometimes I've got to listen to the radio because, you know, I'm, I'm busy and I've got, I can only listen to the games on the radio. But... You know, the TV stuff is... Uh, even the radio, some of the radio stuff's terrible as well, you know. 
Uh, Stephen Craigenbeck, you know, he's anti-Celtic views, a lot of people complaining about it. Then you've got your Thompsons, then you've got your McCanns, then you've got your, you know, Dodds, etc, etc. The list goes on and on. Um, John, who else you got in the comments, buddy? Aye, well, thanks for that anyway, Roseanne, that was a good one. Yeah, cheers, um, Roseanne. Rosemary says, uh, so glad the hoops are back. Uh, it's good to see uh, the proper football back rather than that international guff. Yeah, international guff, John. It's, uh, it's gone for another couple of months, so I don't know when the next international break is, but I hope it's a long, long time away. Um, so back to the good stuff, back to the proper football, and we've got a Champions League game away tonight. It's all good. Anyway, thanks for that, uh, Rose. Who was that? Was it Rosanna? No, it was Rosemary. Thanks, Rosemary. Thanks, Rosemary. Cheers, pal. Uh, Craig Briarley was up next, or Craig Briarley. Uh, he says, back to the real football. Hail, hail. Another one. Glad to have the real stuff back. Good to see you here, Craig. Never yeah. seen you before. Thanks, Craig. Keep the comments coming, pal. And we totally agree. I think everybody agrees, actually. Well, 90% of people agree that it's ju just good to get back to normal with the football because the international stuff is an absolute snooze fest, the same as Rangers against Dundee United. Snooze fest. Oh, I, I watched, uh, I think I watched this, what did I watch that game? Just the second half, really. Seemed to be all Dundee United. They end up to switch to half. I just thought they're never going to score. Switch it half. Um, anyway, thanks for that, Craig. Next up's another new commenter, Dan Breen. Good to see you, Dan. Yeah, Dan, how you doing? Paul, oh, how's things? Um, glad to see you on the channel as well. I think I've seen Dan over at Facebook. He's came over to YouTube. Brilliant, superb. Uh, good to have you on board, Dan. Hi, good to see you here, Dan. And Dan says, uh, the next three games are at home. Superb. That's right, John. That's a good point as well for Dan because we've got the... Actually, I've heard it's four. Um, I don't know. I've not checked it, but I know I've got Falkirk at the weekend. We've got the Champions League game on Wednesday night and we've, we had Hearts there at the weekend. So... It's cup games though, it's no league games, um, but it doesn't matter, it's still home games and it's good to see uh, the champions playing at home. Uh, it's good to see the pitch getting used. Yeah, that's it, John. And uh, I think there's a fourth one at home as well. I I'll need to check that out, but don't quote me on that, folks. Right, anyway, let's move on, Xander. I've run out of time here. Yeah. Uh, next up was Tailing. Good to see you here. Tailing, never seen you either. Hi, Tailing. Tailing says uh, Anthony Ralston played in the Scotland polling game. Oh, I never says he never. Mm. Is that the point? Is that the is that the comment? I I think I know what he's talking about. Can I? I think I says in the last podcast I says uh, I'm not sure if there was any Celtic players, but I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just kind of flying through a comment fast. But I, I know Anthony Ralston was playing in the Scotland polling game. I just forgot. No, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's next comment. Do you want to be honest with you? And by the way, see, yeah, uh, isn't he four in a row for Celtic at home? Somebody was saying that in the comments. Uh, it's uh, three in a row, and then we've got St Johnston away on the 28th of September. So it's three in a row and then away to St Johnston in the league, just in case anybody's interested. All right, Xander. Uh, Paul McCune was up next and says, uh, Hail, hail, Celtic and Celtic women are well. Thanks for that, uh, Paul. Yeah, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Good to hear from you, buddy. Elaine says, Mon the Celts, hail, hail. Hope you're well, John and Xander. I were doing good. Well, I'm doing good anyway. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything's okay as long as we're top of that league. Everything will continue to be okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Uh, next up was Craig Brearley was in with another co comment. Try to get through these fast, Sander. Uh, Craig says, AJ contract is to bring him up to near the high earners. And I read somewhere. Um, so he thinks Alistair John Johnson's contract is to bring him up beside the high earners. Yeah. But I think Alistair Johnson deserves to be a high earner at Celtic. He's a very important player and he's an outstanding right back. So I, if anybody deserves a high wage at Celtic, uh, it's Alistair Johnson, Sander. Yeah, totally agree, John. It's, he's, uh, he's, one of, he's definitely one of our top players, so he should be one of the top earners. That's the bottom line. So, yeah, yeah, I agree with that comment. He's He should be in line with the top earners, Alistair. I totally agree. Thanks for that, uh, Craig. Yeah, cheers, Craig. Uh, James Donan was up next. He says, I disagree with John's 3-1 prediction for Seth Cole beating Dundee United on Sunday as Jim Goodwin is a proud Irishman from Waterford and will be looking to put one over on Seth Cole and cause an upset. He thinks 2-1 to Dundee United. Yeah, well, predictions are difficult, and especially when it comes to Rangers, to be honest with you. We don't really know much about them apart from when we play them. But uh, yeah, proud Irishman, yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't always go that way, does it? It's 
I didn't see, I think I seen about five minutes of that game to be honest with you, and what I saw was a total snooze fest, I switched it off and went for a sleep myself, <laughs> it helped me go to sleep, so yeah, I woke up and uh, I found out it was one nothing to them, so that's all I know, um, but yeah, score predictions are no easy, John, it's, um, I said a draw I think for that one, but nah, they got their three points at the end, didn't they? Aye, well I was right, I knew they would win, um, but... I, well, it's hard to uh, pick a score prediction. It's uh, it's just one of the things you have a, a stab at it. You base it base it on form against each other, and I don't rate Jim Goodwin as a manager either. By the way, well, John, just think... to interrupt. Sorry, John, just to interrupt. That's a good quite a point you brought up there, John, because Jim Goodwin as a manager has never had a result against Rangers. So there you go. What do you think of that? Uh, I didn't know that. I just don't rate him as a manager. I just don't rate him. But good research there, if that's true, Zander, because I don't know anything about that stuff. I don't research stuff like that. But Jim Goodwin, I like Jim Goodwin. Nice big guy. Uh, probably a good time as well. I know he had a wee stunt at Celtic. We did, yeah. But, look, I just don't rate big Jim as a manager. Uh, but there you go. Uh, anyway, James, my prediction was... Uh, Right, Rangers did win. They didn't win three one, but I just knew that they would win. I just knew Dundee United wouldn't stop them. Nah, I mean there's only one or two teams in the league that's going to beat Rangers, John, let's be honest. The only one or two teams that um have got the ability to beat Rangers they put in the effort against Rangers, let's be perfectly frank. I'm not saying Dundee United didn't put in any effort, by the way. I'm just saying there's teams like Aberdeen will beat Rangers quite often. Celtic will beat Rangers very often, if not all the time. Uh, and maybe, I don't know, maybe a Kamarnock or a Motherwell every, every now and again, John. But nah, it's not easy for these teams to beat teams like Rangers, who's, who do have, let's be honest, um, quality players in their team. Yeah. Ross County. Dundee. <laughs> it's no easy. It's, it's no, we have to go, uh, you know, a magic wand and we can just click it and see what the score's going to be. It's... Uh, or a crystal ball or anything like that. We just have a guess at it. Yeah, it's, just, think... a, it's just a bit of fun. It's actually just a, it's just a a wee feature we have in the podcast, and it's good. People enjoy it. People like it. We've even got a competition based on it. So, uh, by the way, speaking of the competition, quickly mention it before you go to the next comment, John. Uh, it's the correct score for Falkirk game on Sunday. One guess each in the comments to win the Lisbon Lions metal plaque. So get your entries in, folks. It's just a YouTube. Exclusive, exclusively to YouTube, I might add. It's not going to be anywhere else, just for the, the YouTube subscribers and viewers. So get into the competition, folks, and good luck, everybody. Ah, good luck to everybody. Uh, I'm just looking to think about Jim Jim Goodwin's past. He was at Aberdeen. He didn't do well there. He was at St Mirren. I think he did okay. I can't really remember. I just remember me thinking I don't rate him as a manager. I never have rated him. Mm-hmm. Nice guy that he is. I like Big Jim. Good Big Tim as well. Uh, and I wish him all the best with Dundee United. I hope he, he manages to, uh, to get his team on the, the winning formula again, Xander, and do well with Dundee United, because I like Dundee United. And uh, they do put in an effort against Rangers, they always do. Yeah, they always put in an effort, John. They just haven't got the players quite yet. And they'll just came up from the championship as well. Anybody that's listening, uh, thank you for listening and viewing. We appreciate it. Hit the subscribe, like and share button and hit your notification bell so you can get a notification for the competition. We'll have a wee video out on Wednesday for that. All right, John, Bratislava, Wednesday night. Wee final thought, what are you thinking? I don't know, just Celtic. Uh, just hope they pick up where they left off before the international break. By the way, just quickly, uh, we would never sell a club was uh, disappointed with either. No getting a start in the, champion, uh, the, the international break. I was the same. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, I I think uh, Celtic will uh, pick up with the left half on Saturday and go to win the game, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be close, Sander. I think it's going to be very close, and uh, we'll wait and see what happens. I'm looking forward to it, actually. Yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, John, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, actually, because I've got Wednesday night free, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'll be watching it with my grandson, me, Matthew. He watches every game with me now, so he's uh, that's him. He's hooked on Celtic, um, and we brought him in Celtic beat Rangers as well. I've never seen anything like it in my life. So anyway, John, uh, let's wrap it up there. Good luck to Celtic Wednesday night. It's going to be good. Looking forward to it, as I keep saying, because I'm looking forward to it. I'm getting excited about it just now. 
Uh, thanks for coming on, John. Thanks, everybody, for viewing. And uh, just come back and view the next video. If you don't mind, John, and we'll catch you on the post-match for the Champions League game.